Hello booktube, Sarah here and welcome back to another weekly reading vlog. Today is Saturday, January the 12th and it is about 8 o'clock at night and I am just sitting down now to chat with you. I'm going to of course share my knitting with you guys right now and talk about what I've been reading today. Um, but uh, today has been uh, today's been a typical Saturday. Uh, I actually slept in a little bit this morning which was really nice and then uh, we went grocery shopping and then I came home and I was exhausted. I mean, even though I slept in this morning, I think I'm still playing catch up from the week. So I ended up napping for like an hour and a half this afternoon. So now I'm wide awake. Uh, and once I'm done this, I plan on sitting down and spending my evening doing some knitting and watching some booktube. So the other thing I had to deal with today is that I've been dealing with Amazon over the last couple days. Um, so if you watch my last vlog, you know I bought a, myself a new present, which is a Kindle Fire. And I actually, I didn't buy it at the time I bought this, but I bought it like in a, this, like a couple hours later. I thought, oh geez, I really need a case for this because I don't want to just carry it around, you know, like this in my purse. So I went on and I ordered a case. Well, we do have Prime, so it wasn't that big a deal. And it said it was going to be delivered by today. So yesterday on Friday, I got delivery notification, like shipment notification, and it said it was going to be delivered by end of day yesterday. And I thought, well, great, I'll have it for the weekend. That's fantastic. So yesterday comes and goes, and I end up looking at my email because I'm like, well, where is it? It was never delivered. And the notice says that they could not access my building. And I'm like, well, what does that mean? I mean... If my address is a little odd, I'm not going to tell you guys what it is, obviously, but my address is a little odd and sometimes it's a little confusing. Even to people at like Purelator or FedEx or stuff like that, um, unless they're familiar with our area because we have a street number, we have a building number, and we have a unit number. So there are different buildings within our, our complex, if you want to call it that. And then within each building, there is four, eight, 12 apartments. So my address can look a little bit odd. And every time I get a delivery from Amazon, I always get a phone call. Because we live in the city, it's like Amazon's delivery service, I guess. They, they deliver. It's not a drone. That would be very cool, but it's not. Um, and I always get a phone call saying, I'm here. How do I get to your building? And then I'll just tell them and say, you know, this is, and then it's fine. But I never received a phone call on Friday. So I thought, okay, well, you obviously didn't attempt to do anything because I would have known about it. And the fact that you couldn't access anything, that doesn't make any sense because my husband has been home all day. So if you even attempted to press the button, like if you found our building and you got up and you pressed the buzzer, somebody would have been here to answer. So regardless. So that was fine. So last night I got on the chat with Amazon and I told the person and they're like, oh, we're really sorry you know, um, delivery will be by end of day today on Saturday. So like I said, it's eight o'clock at night, nothing, no phone call, no nothing. So I just finished a chat again with Amazon and the guy was apologetic. You know, he's like, I'm really sorry. Um, they said, um, that it would definitely be by the end of day Monday. So we shall see. And, um, and they put permanent notes on my file that they are always to call first um, because, you know, of the whole weird address thing. So, but for compensation, they were very sweet. I mean, you know, Amazon, big conglomerate, I get it, you know, but it really is, I am very happy with Amazon. We do pay for Prime, you know, and, and I do, I order a lot from them. So does my husband, you know, and, and I really like it. And they issued a $5 certificate, like a gift certificate to me for my troubles, which was very nice. They really didn't have to do that. It's not like I needed this item like right away and it was like for a gift or something like that. But it was more, I was just more annoyed by the fact that they are saying they were trying to do something and they didn't. You know, I mean, if they had told me when I talked to them on Friday, you know, we're really sorry, delivery will be attempted by end of day Monday, that's fine. I just want to know, you know what I mean? So anyway, that's my little story for today um, about my dealings with Amazon. So let me show you what I have been knitting on. And then I will talk, of course, about my reading. So first of all, in this adorable bag, um, I never mentioned where this was from, but I bought this years ago. And for those of you who watch knitting podcasts, this is by Kay at the Bakery Bears. Um, the Bakery Bears podcast. Back, I don't know if she still sells bags. I, I haven't watched one of their episodes in a, in a while, 
But yeah, so this was done by Kay at the Bakery Bears. I was able to, oh gosh, it was when she, they were first when she was first selling bags, and um, I got on right away and I bought a bag for me and a bag for my husband. So he has a Star Wars um, bag. But yeah, but this this was made by Kay at the Bakery Bears, so that was pretty cool. So these are my gobstopper gobstopper socks. Say that three times fast as I'm calling them. Um, I'm also referring to them as Easter socks because they are so Easter colors. Like they remind me of like jelly bean or peeps colors, which is why. Check it out, guys. I have a peeps stitch marker. Yes, I'm a little obsessed with peeps. I do love them. I love them. I, I love anything marshmallow. Um, and I know they're just pure sugar and like so bad for you, but I love them and I think they're adorable. And I bought this somewhere online. I can't remember where, but yeah, I've, I've had this for quite some time. So it's my peep stitch marker. So that's where I was last Saturday when I showed you guys. So as you can see, I have now put in the heel. I did that yesterday. And now I'm just working up the leg of the sock. So yeah, really enjoyable to work on. Um, like I said, this is Hermione's Everyday Sock Pattern, which is a personal favorite of mine. It is a nice, easy peasy uh, pattern that gives you just a little something, like a little texture to the sock. Of course, the ball of sock yarn. And the yarn is from Truly Wicked Crafts. Yes, Truly Wicked Crafts. And the colorway, of course, is called Gobstopper, which is where the name of the yarn, or the name, what I'm calling these socks, comes from. So yeah, so I've got quite a bit of work done on that. Very, very happy with it. The next thing I've been working on, oh, excuse me, sorry, I gotta reach again. In the bag my sister-in-law made me for Christmas, the I Learned to Knit in Prison bag <laughs> that I just love. Um, this is my Lan Glade sweater. This is designed by Melissa Shishwari, and I've gotten quite a bit of work done on this. So let me just turn it around for you guys. I don't want to lose stitches off the needles. Um, so the stitch marker is where I was last Saturday, and that's how much I've gotten done. About three or four inches, I guess, onto the body. So yeah, this is literally just knitting around and around and around now. Um, there is a little something to do at the sides, like you're doing, um, I don't want to obviously give away the pattern because it is a paid for pattern, but um, you do um, put um, purl stitches in the side, so it'll kind of give this like down the side of the sweater. So yeah, so this one I am really, really enjoying. Um, like I said, Langlade by Melissa Shishwari. It's a great pattern. It's going to be awesome. The yarn is Knit Picks Acrylic uh, Worsted Weight in the colorway Cornflower. And then the sweater has this beautiful lace detailing down the sleeves, or it will when it's when it's all done. But yeah, absolutely loving this one. A nice, easy knit. Um, I, I'm really, I, I love the pattern. Um, her patterns are really great. Very, very easy to understand. And yeah, I'm very, very happy with it. And then the last thing is the other sweater I was giving some love to today. I'm actually almost done the body of this. And this is the... Comfort Fade Cardi by Andrea Mowry, um, and where is it here? So this is a cardigan, the other one is a pullover, and the reindeer stitch marker is where I was last Saturday, so that's how much I've gotten done. It's about an inch and a half or so, but I measured it today, and I'm already, it, it calls for you to go to 12 inches, and I am almost there, but I put it on and tried it on, and I'm not, I want it to be a little bit longer. So I am actually going to add another couple inches to it. I know you got to put ribbing on the bottom as well, so that's going to lengthen it. But I do like a nice long sweater, and I have a lot of yarn for this. I have a lot of this yarn in my stash because I had bought this to do a different sweater that took a lot more yarn. So I can I can definitely make it longer, and that's not a problem. So I'm going to add a few more inches to it. I, I'm hoping, hoping by the next time I talk to you guys, like on Saturday, next Saturday, to actually have the body done and to be, I think the next step is the sleeves or picking up and knitting like the button band and the collar. I'm not sure, I'll have to look at the pattern. But yeah, so I am really, really loving this. This is also Knit Picks uh, acrylic yarn um, in the sport weight, which is just a little bit thicker than a sock weight yarn. Oh, it's all twisted around my foot over here. Yeah, a little bit thicker than a uh, sock weight yarn. And the color weight is called Seraphin which is a really pretty, of course, purple gray, and I'm really loving it. So yeah, so that's all my knitting, you guys. Um, let's get into what I have been reading today. So <clears throat> I mentioned in my last vlog that yesterday I started my next audiobook, which is Chasing Perfect by Susan Mallory. This is narrated on audio by Tanya Eby. I am loving this, but this one is a reread for me. I've read it a couple times, but I want to read my way through the entire series. 
So as part of my Stacking the Series Challenge for 2019, I picked the first 11 books in the series, and then in 2020, I will go with the remaining books. So I'll finish, start and finish the series within the next couple years. Um, I know it sounds like a big commitment, and I do have a friend, I think it's Man, um, well, I know it's Mandy, but I'm pretty sure she reads through this, or when they were being published, because these are, the series is finished now, to my understanding, that she has read through the entire series a couple times, I think. Um, but anyway, um, uh, this is a small town contemporary romance series, and uh, the town of Fool's Gold is set in the foothills of the Sierra Nevadas in California. And it's just a great little small town romance, and I absolutely love this one. Um, this is the story of Charity and um, Josh, and Charity is the new city planner in town, and Josh is the um, the local celebrity, the local sports celebrity, if you will. He um, he used to race uh, bicycles, like um, Tour de France, kind of an idea. A uh, Lance Armstrong, and they do make reference to yeah, I'm kind of like Lance Armstrong. Um, you know, and then there was a horrible accident that happened and he hasn't been able to race since and her, him and Charity start a relationship and of course there's secrets and there's reasons why Charity is in town. I love this book so, so much. Um, I, 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 I think, did I read it a couple years ago? I think I read it a couple years ago, maybe in 2018 or no, last year it was 2018, 2016 maybe. Um, I think I read it that year on audio as well. Um, so I'm listening to it again on audio. It's not terribly long, about eight and a half hours. Uh, so I have about four hours left. I'm about halfway through it right now. And I will definitely get it done tomorrow. Really, really enjoying it. Again, this is a personal favorite of mine. Um, and my current uh, ebook is A Maverick to Remarry by Christine Rimmer. This is the first book in the Lonely Hearts Ranch series, I think it's called. Um, and this is a cute story. I'm about three or four chapters into it. I plan on getting a bit more read tonight. And it's about a couple named Amy and Derek. And Amy and Derek were high school sweethearts. And they, uh, of course, um, something happened. I don't want to give too much away because you really, it doesn't really come out till later. But something, and they, something happens and they end up getting married. Um, like she's 18 and he's 19. So they were very young. And they got married in secret. The only two people who knew that they got married were them and her parents. And they were only married for like, you know, together for five days. And then um, circumstance happens. They end up, you know, going their separate ways. And they haven't seen each other in 13 years. And now both of them are back. To, like, he never left town. He's always been in town, the town of Rust Creek Falls. And uh, her and her parents had moved away after this kind of all happened. To Colorado and she's now back in town because her best friend is marrying his best friend uh, and they of course are best man and maid of honor and like I said they haven't seen each other in 13 years so you know it's gonna be adorable I'm sure a second chance romance I do love Christine Rimmer's writing I really enjoy this series I read book five in November or December uh, which was the Mavericks Christmas to remember I think it was about the girl who fell off the stool and had amnesia and thought the first guy that she saw was her fiance um, that was a really cute story too so I'm really liking this one it's a very easy read and yeah I, I attempt I plan to probably finish this one tomorrow or Monday maybe um, like I said easy read um, that's really all the reading I've gotten done today I do plan on doing some more reading excuse me for reaching hold on sorry off camera for a second I plan on getting some more reading done on this tonight too this is Unreasonable Summer by Dixie Bow uh, Brown Brown Browning. I can talk. <laughs> I need to make a cup of tea and relax. Um, and uh, this is a really cute story. It is this is part of my Forty Years of Harlequin project. This is the book from 1980, and it is about a woman and a guy who they already, without even meeting, don't. Well, she doesn't like him because she's an artist and he's an art critic. He's also an artist in his own right, but he's an art critic as well. And he has kind of panned her work. And uh, circumstance comes up and the two of them end up renting the exact same cabin in the Outer Banks of the Carolinas for the summer and have to kind of force to get along. So right now I am about 80 pages of the way through this. I'd like to get about another 40 or so pages read tonight. So yeah, that shouldn't be too difficult. These books aren't, uh, aren't terribly involved. But it's a really cute story and I'm thoroughly enjoying it. And by tomorrow I'd like to finish... Abigail's Adventure uh, by Carolyn Lee, which is the first book in the Alphabet Mail Order Bride series uh, that me 
and uh, Sissy or Kim from the Romance Queen of Booktube and a handful of other people are reading. We're going to be reading through the series over the next year, like through the course of this year. And uh, some of us quicker than others. I know Mandy, my friend Mandy's reading it with us and she's like flying through it. But that's Mandy. She's, she's um, you know, let me just read the next one. Let me just read the next one. And she puts the rest of us to shame. I'm pretty sure she told me that her Goodreads goal for this year is like 700 books or something. She should easily hit that. Uh, but anyway, so there's a group of us reading through it this year. If anyone else is interested in joining us, let me know. Um, Sissy, I'm sorry for jumping ahead or jumping into because she's the one who kind of started this. But, you know, kind of fun for us all to discuss it, maybe. Um, and yeah, so anyway, that is it um, that I wanted to talk about today. Uh, tomorrow I am going to bingo with mom um, in the morning. And then I plan on spending the rest of the day relaxing. So lots of reading and knitting and booktube time tomorrow. But I'll definitely chat with you guys tomorrow night. Until then, I'll talk to you. Bye, guys. Hi, everybody. Happy Monday. It is Monday, January the 14th, and it is about 8.30 at night. First of all, I want to apologize um, for not getting a clip up for you guys yesterday. I didn't even think about it till I woke up this morning, and I realized that last night I did not do that, and I am so sorry. And now I have a bunch of finished books to tell you guys about, because I have finished now one, two, three, four books, four finished books to talk to you guys about. So we're going to try and make this as quick as possible. But um, the other thing is, you'll probably notice, no, I'm not sick or anything like that. The red, <laughs> I, I was at the mall and I went and got my eyebrows and my upper lip done. Yes, I I get that done. I, you know what? We're Those of us who are women, we understand, right? Um, <laughs> I was there and I was a little overdue and I thought, okay, I'm here. It's a Monday at the mall, so it was like dead. Like there was nobody there, which was great. So I thought I could, I had the time to get in and get that done. So here we are. It'll look much better tomorrow. <laughs> My skin does this for about six hours or so. So by tomorrow morning when I wake up, um, it'll look much better. But anyway, we're not here to talk about that. Uh, Monday today was a typical Monday, you guys. Um, I actually ended up leaving work about 12.30 and I ended up coming home and working from home for the rest of the afternoon. It was relatively, I can't say it was quiet, but um, there's a big um, convention, uh, I want to call it a convention, um, like a trade show, I guess it's a trade show, for my industry is happening in Atlanta, Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday of this week. And um, most of the reps and stuff like that are down there and most of our sales guys and you know my manager and stuff like that are all down there. So. My coworker and I, um, we just said, you know what, let's just work from home for this afternoon. So that's what I decided to do. I think he's actually going to work from home tomorrow. I am going to go back in the office. I said that to my husband tonight because I was still working about 5.30 and I'm supposed to finish at 5. I was already at home, right? And I said to Garrett, you know, I just, I I like the idea of working in home, at, from home in theory, but it's just not something I enjoy doing because I have a hard time then separating, okay, it's time to go home. Do you know what I mean? Um, so every now and then it's okay, and I do love the fact that I have the option, especially if there's a snowstorm or something like that, so that way I'm not killing myself to get into the office, or, you know, driving two hours in the snow to get there, to turn around and come home and do the same thing, when I could already be at work answering the phone and emails instead of driving through that. So in the winter, I do have a laptop, that a work laptop that I can bring back and forth, so in the winter time, you know, if I know that they're going to be calling for something, I will bring it with me home, and then I've got it here if I need to. Now for the phones, um, we have a phone system, and we use um, Skype, I guess it is for everything. So I can actually, I downloaded it on my cell phone. So I was taking phone calls on my cell phone this afternoon. So you know, like that's that's fine. I mean, it's it's on Wi-Fi. It's all digital, right? So so that was okay. Um, but anyway, sorry, long story short, I worked from home a bit this afternoon, but I was, I was productive, but I feel I would be more productive in that environment. You know, you, you associate work at the office, not work sitting on my couch. So anyway, all the books that I finished over the last two days. So yesterday I finished one book, today I finished three books. So it, it sounds a lot more impressive than it actually is. Well, no, it's not too badly impressive. Um, so yesterday I finished Chasing Perfect by Susan Mallory, which is the first book in the Fool's Gold series. Five stars. I've read this book three times, I think, and every time I read it, it's it's five stars. Absolutely. It is one of my favorite books by her. Um, I talked about the premise of this in my last clip that you guys would have seen, the one on Sunday, 
And yeah, I don't really have too much more to add to it. I, I just love the story. I think it's such a sweet romance. It's a great small town feel to it. Um, Tanya Eby does such a brilliant job narrating this series. I think she does the entire series, but um, she does such a great job on it, and I absolutely love them. So then today, I finished this morning before I went into work. Um, I was sitting on the couch this morning. I couldn't sleep last night either, so I'm tired tonight. I woke up about 4 o'clock this morning, and I had, like, insomnia big time. My brain just started thinking about all these different things. You guys know what I mean? And I'm, like, looking at the clock, and I'm like, it's 5.30. There's no sense in me going back to bed for, like, an hour. So I just got up, and I got up, and I started reading. And I finished Unreasonable Summer by Dixie Browning. Um, I enjoyed this one, three and a half stars. Um, really, really cute. Again, I talked about this one, I believe, in my last clip. And um, about the two people who... It's the... It's the romance, you know, I, I don't like using the word trope. It's the romance type plot line where two people are put together in circumstance and, you know, they kind of fall for each other and it's an opposites attract kind of an idea too. Really cute story. I did enjoy it quite a bit. I have no idea if this is available as an ebook. Um, I didn't even think to look on Amazon. I don't think so. I mean, it's from 81. Now, that being said, the book I read earlier or late last year from 79 or 76 was available as an ebook, but that author is very prolific and they kind of did the best of her collection. She's very prolific as well, so it might be, I don't know. But yeah, it was it was super cute. If you come across it in a used bookstore, go ahead and pick it up because I really did enjoy it. Then the next book that I finished um, was A Maverick to Remarry by Christine Rimmer. Uh, this is the first book in the Montana Mavericks The Lonely Hearts Ranch series. Um, this one was really cute. Three and a half stars as well. It is a second chance romance. It's about a couple who dated in high school and then do two issues or circumstance. End up having a quickie marriage, you know, at the, uh, at the local courthouse when she was 18 and he was 19. They spent five days of wedded bliss in a trailer, not in a trailer, in a motel off the, off the highway. And then her parents came and kind of said, you know, enough of this, you know, foolishness. And they split up and hadn't seen each other in 13 years. And then they're back together in town. She moved to Colorado. Um, and he's obviously in Montana. And um, because he is the best man and she is the maid of honor at their very good friend's wedding. And of course it goes from there. It was really, really cute. Very adorable. Um, I, some spicy times in it. Um, but it was it was really cute. And I, I really enjoyed the story. Christine Rimmer is a really great author. And I'm, I'm really, really enjoying all of her books. So... Uh, thumbs up to that one. And then the last book I finished tonight, um, I, when I was answering some emails today, because the phones weren't that bad, like I said, with this convention or trade show going on, that's the one thing. I was able to answer phone calls on my phone, but there weren't very many of them. They all seemed to come in one lump sum, like right around 5 o'clock. So I finished listening to, um, oh my gosh, I'm totally blanking on the title of this book now. Something Undercover picture of it will be right here. I do. I am so, so sorry, guys. I, again, I am tired. Um, I listened to this one. I started it this morning and I finished it tonight. So this was a one day listen. It was only five hours long on audio. So I flew through it real quick. It was by Dana Martin. Um, and um, I, I enjoyed it. Three stars. Uh, I liked the first book better in this series. This one um, was about Anita. Sorry, blanking on the names. And she is one of the, so the whole premise of this series, it's a really neat premise, is that it's these four women who were sent to prison for different crimes. Um, the woman in the first book, uh, she was a hacker. Uh, this one owned a company and embezzled $4 million. One of the women is a cop, and one of the women, I think, was like on the street, so she might have been maybe theft and stuff like that, I can't really remember. Um, but these four women... Um, have a special skill set. All of them have special skill sets and were released from prison early and are now being trained and you not used. I don't want to use the word used, but they were given like the option. You could either f complete your sentence, whatever it was, or you could come out of prison early, but you're trained to be on this mission kind of an idea. And it takes place in the Cayman Islands. And th there's an overarching story between all four of the books. Um, them trying to catch this, this, uh, pretty bad guy who's embezzling money and killing people and very mafia sounding. And so this is Anita's story. She's the one who embezzled the money. And along with the main plot line of them trying to figure out, you know, trying to capture this guy and, uh, who's 
you know, M Mr. Mafia guy, they, um, she's trying to find out who actually embezzled the money because she didn't do it. But yet she was kind of framed for it. And she ended up serving time, of course, in prison. It was a good story. I liked it. There was a lot of action in it. Um, but again, I didn't like it as much as the first. I think maybe because I didn't like this main character as much as I liked. I think Carly was the girl in the first book. Um, but still, it's it's a fun series. It's an intrigue. So it's, you know, that whole romantic suspense thing. Really enjoyable. Um, you know, it was a fun little read. It's available as part of the Audible Romance Package. So if you want to check it out, go ahead. You don't have to have read the first book. But I think it's more fun with a series like this. It's only a four book series. And they are relatively short novels to, to, uh, to get through. So anyway, yeah, so that is it, you guys. I tried to keep this clip a little bit shorter, but I didn't record yesterday, so there you go. Um, but yeah, I will be back tomorrow to talk to you guys then. Take care, guys. Bye. Hi, everybody. It is Tuesday, uh, January the 15th, and it's about 6.30 at night. I uh, thought I'd come to you with an update because I also have very exciting... Hold on, let me grab it. I'm going to do an unboxing because I the boxes are always so super huge from David. I David's, I assure you. There's not this much stuff in here, but um, <laughs> they were having a big 50% off sale. And um, again, like I said about getting the Kindle, we allowed ourselves to spend a little bit of money. So I got some tea and my Kindle. I got some tea from another place too that I'm waiting for it to come in. It's another tea company that I want to try because they also do an advent calendar, but I want to see what their tea is like before, you know, I'm going to try it a couple times this year and... Um, because I want to see what it's like before I go ahead and commit to, like, you know, come November or October, whenever the calendar goes on sale, to order it for um, for next Christmas. I know it's like a whole year away, but still. You gotta plan out these things, you guys. But anyway, um, I did work from home again today, uh, but it was because I woke up this morning with a massive migraine headache. And I just, I came out here and I thought, okay, I'll take something and I... I took some uh, some Tylenol or whatever because there's not much else I can really take outside of that. And I laid down on the couch because I was exhausted and I fell asleep. And um, um, I woke up and I just, I did not have the energy to get dressed and get in the car and drive to work. But luckily because I have my, um, I had my laptop here from yesterday, I was able to uh, just work from home today. So. I uh, got online a little bit later than I normally would because I was a little behind, um, but I got online and I worked straight through until about 2 o'clock this afternoon, didn't take a break or lunch or anything like that, and then I went and lay down for about an hour or two, um, and now it's pretty much gone, so thank goodness. Um, and then when I got up, I worked for another hour and a half or so. So I worked longer than my normal time, and, um, you know, to make up the difference and stuff like that, so yeah, so... You know, if I didn't work today, like, I, I guarantee you I would have gone into 150 emails tomorrow. So, you know, as difficult as it was to stare at the computer screen, sorry, that was just my oven going off, um, it was still easier than sitting in the office with all the noise and the fluorescent lighting, which is horrible when you have a headache. Um, so, yeah, so anyway, so that is that. Um, so let's go ahead and open the box. I mean, I know what's in here. But I'm super excited to see what some of them look like. So, like I said, big 50% off sale. I can tell you everything that I got, um, outside of shipping and taxes, it was $35 for everything that I got. So, super duper deals, you guys. Like, seriously. Um, some of these things I just couldn't pass up. So, let me box open here. The cats will... Oops, sorry. I'm going to try not to knock over the camera. My bill and my free teas. Tissue paper. This is, this stuff is 90% of the packaging, like legit. I don't know why they don't have smaller boxes. So let me just pull everything out and then I can get rid of the box. Hold on. All right, there we go. So I'll start off with the tea. So they had these on sale. They're the little like, I, they're not single serve. There's six sachets in here, like six sachets of tea in each of these. And these were on sale for like five bucks each. So they're usually 10, so that's not bad. And um, I got them for the sole fact to take them to work. 
so I can take these to work with me. And I, they're, they're already, I'll show you what I mean. Because David's tea typically comes when you buy it. It comes loose, which reminds me, excuse me. I should have, haha, there it is. Okay, it typically comes loose like this. This was my freebie because I am a member of the Frequent Steepers Club. Um, you spend so much money and you get points. And when you rack up enough points, you get a free 50 gram thing of tea. So the free one that I picked was Cold 911, which is a favorite of mine. I have, I always have it on hand. Um, I've talked about this one before. It's great for when you're sick. Now it has no medicinal properties to it or anything at all like that. Um, it is, uh, what has it gotten it? Uh, deliciously soothing. Okay, so it's a soothing mix of peppermint, juniper berries, and eucalyptus. It is so soothing, like if you have a sore throat, or if you find like you're congested, again, no medicinal properties, but it really is just a nice tea and I find it really helps me sleep when I'm sick. So I always like to keep this on hand. If you start to feel that scratchy throat and stuff like that, there has been times that, you know, if I'm starting to feel like I'm coming down with something, I will drink a couple cups of this and I will feel better. So just a, you know, an FYI to you guys, if you want. So anyway, it usually comes like this loose, like it's loose in this bag, it's loose tea. But these ones come, Oh, they keep it all packaged up so nicely. I'll just open it up. I'm going to open them anyway, so it's not that big a deal. Um, they come already in a satchel with, you know, your string and, you know, to put it in your cup, essentially. Oh, that smells so good. Oh, my gosh. So the three that I got were, the, um, they had a whole bunch of them, but I got the three that I really, well, one that I haven't tried and then the other couple. So this one in my hand... I'm not going to be able to get it back in here now, guys. You get all the fun faces. Okay. This one is caramel shortbread. A caramelized classic, it says. This one is really yummy. So caramel shortbread. And then I also got Fireside Mocha, which is Mochiato Dreams. I've never tried this one, but it sounds really yummy. What's the ingredients? Cocoa beans, apple, sugar, chocolate chips, chocolate chips and tea. That sounds good. Uh, pink peppers. What are pink peppers? Interesting. But yeah, so I got that one. Um, Fireside Mocha. Again, it's only six little satchels, so it's okay to, to taste test. And Candy Cane Crush, which is a favorite of mine. Love that one too. So that, those are the tea that I got. And then, because again, 50% off, I, I can't say no to their mugs. Um, my husband and I have done a cleaning up, or we're going to be doing more of a cleaning up, of getting rid of a lot of the mugs that we have, because we do have too many of them, and some of them are old, and you know, what have you. So I got one of their, I love these mugs, they're a great size. Uh, all their mugs come with, or most of their mugs come with one of these. And what this is, is for your loose leaf tea. So you put your tea in here and then you put it in your cup. And let me pull out the cup and I'll show It's so cute! <laughs> it's a little sea lion, isn't that adorable? So, and then on the other side, look at them! So yeah, so a nice big, like this is a decent sized mug. So then what you would do is, if, if you're not sure if you don't use loose leaf tea, is you can use this. So you put this into your mug and it just sits. Now this this fits a lot of different sizes of mug. So sometimes you have to kind of balance it if the mug has got a wider lip to it. But it does fit about 90% of the mugs that I have. And then you put your loose leaf tea in there. And then you pour your hot water in and you just leave it and let it steep. You put this, it comes with a lid. You put the lid on top and just kind of let it steep, right? Take the lid off, and then you'll take this out and dump, you know, the tea out, and then you've got your tea in your mug. And then the cool thing is too, is that this can also act as a, you know, what do you call it? Like a coaster, essentially, yeah. So there's the top, super duper adorable. I really, really love them, so I got that. And then, put all the packaging away over here. I got another travel mug because I have an addiction to travel mugs. I've been trying to be good. Um, I went through my tea cupboard not that long ago and I did clean out some of the stuff. Um, a lot of the stuff that I had, I had like half bags of the same tea. So I just kind of combined them all and I really cleaned up my tea cupboard. But I realized I do have a lot of tea. <laughs> Hello. Um, and I just bought more. So I, um, I vowed to take my tea to work every day. So that's what I've been doing. So I have one travel mug, but I like having a backup just in case. And I couldn't say no to this one either. 
It has a polar bear. Isn't he cute? <laughs> I just thought that was really cute. It's got a handle on the top. Um, and I'll open it up and show you guys. So it's just your straight, it's just a normal travel mug. Um, how to wash. I know how to wash. Everything gets washed by hand in my house. Anything that says dishwasher say, or, you know, cannot be used in the dishwasher, that doesn't bother me because we don't have one. So for this one, this is a little bit different. Loose leaf tea goes in here. Lid goes on top, right? You fill it with hot water and then you put it inside and it will steep it through. Or you can like pop this off if you wanted. Or no, that wouldn't work actually. Or what you could do is, it's been a while since I've used this type. You put in there so you, and then like you'd put your loose leaf tea in there. Then you can just pour your hot water directly through there. It'll just have to seep through so it might take a little bit longer you don't want it to overflow and then it'll just sit like that and then typically what I do before I go to work because I don't like my tea to be oversteeped is I'll pop this out and I'll take that piece off this piece here and I'll clean it out and put it in the sink and then I'll clean it when I get home um, and then I just go to work put my lid on and then you can drink it and the neat thing is because there is can you guys see there's like a screen a mesh screen there if for some reason you get like chunks by accident they won't come through there which is kind of great so yeah so I, I do uh, I do like that or if you choose to leave it in there while you're drinking it you can do that too and you're not gonna get the tea coming through but I prefer to take a little piece inside out so yeah so there's a little um, tea uh, 411 in case anyone was curious <laughs> I do love tea I really really I mean hello I changed the name of my channel to kind of represent that um, so anyway, so yeah, so there's my little unboxing. Now I'm, I'm like, I've got stuff everywhere. Um, oh, and something very exciting coming in a couple weeks. Uh, I think next week to the channel. I can't remember what day I have it scheduled to go up. I'll be filming it tomorrow and I'll be scheduling it then. But, um, I got book mail, but I'm not opening it now. It's going to be a completely separate video and I'll talk about that later. So reading today, because <laughs> I know that's why you guys are here. Um, so I have not finished anything today. I did get quite a bit of reading done when I was working away this morning. I just plop, popped in my audiobook because the one thing I didn't do today was put my foot, like, I think I mentioned yesterday, I was able to run Skype through my phone, Skype for business, and I was able to run it through my cell phone so I could take calls at work or take calls while I was working from home. But I didn't do that today just because my head was pounding so bad. I thought if I can at least just get through emails, I'll be happy. And, you know, my coworkers knew that and they were absolutely fine with me being off the phones today. Um, so I did come back on the phones later tonight and I took a couple calls and I did see that a couple people called me. So I called them back, but just to have the phone constantly going off, I couldn't do that today. So I popped my headphones in and I listened to my audiobook. I am currently listening to Fade to Black by Heather Graham, book number 20 something. I can't remember off the top of my head from the Crew of Hunters series. I haven't read one of these in a number of months and I missed it. Um, it is such a good series. I just do love it so much. Um, so this one isn't officially a crew of hunters. Like it doesn't, neither of the main players in this are members of the crew of hunters. One of them, Brian, um, our male lead has helped and he's a private investigator. So the premise of this story is that it is about a group of people, these five people who used to be on like this cult hit TV show called Gothic something or other. I can't remember Gothic honor or hauntings or hollow or something like that it's a it was about a family that live in like a small town and they um have magical powers and anyway uh the show's been off the air for about five years or something and they're at one of those comic book conventions and the matriarch of the family so the, an older you know like she's in her 40s older she's my age probably um is murdered right there at the comic-con like in front of everybody and they think at first that it's just like a play like they're they're acting out something because um, some guy comes in wielding a sword and they're kind of play acting back and forth and then he goes to hit her with a sword but actually ends up killing her but on purpose so they're investigating her murder but of course they're talking to her ghost and uh, Marnie is it Marnie I don't think it's Marnie oh I'm drawing a blank you guys I'm so sorry I can't remember the main character's name I know it's Brian and I don't think it's Melanie Oh, I'm so horrible. Anyway, I'll, I'll remember. I'll, I'll put it right here if I remember to do that. Um, she was one of the actresses on the show. She was the youngest person on the show. She's now, 
I think in her late twenties. And, um, so she witnessed the murder, like she held her friend as she died essentially. But now of course the killer is after her. So her and Brian are investigating, but now the crew of hunters have kind of stepped in stuff like that. So I'm really, really enjoying it. It's, it's a lot of fun. Um, and yeah, I, I should definitely get it done tomorrow because I think I only have a couple hours left on it. And my current ebook that I am reading is uh, Murder Likes It Hot, I think it's called, by Tracy Weber. I believe it's the sixth book in the Downward Dog uh, Cozy Mystery Series. A little disappointed in this one, but it's no fault of the book. This is a net galley read, and this was a uncorrected proof. So I'm finding a lot of errors in this in the way it's formatted and it's really frustrating to read. For example, the word quickly. So you get it spelled Q-U-I-C-K-L and then there's a space and then there's the Y. And you're, I find that a lot. Um, the main character's dog's name is Bella, B-E-L-L-A. And in the uncorrected format, it's spelled B-E-L space A. Real, like at first I was like, did she rename the dog? Like, is it Belle? Like the way I read that first time, it was like Belle, ah, uh, something, blah, blah, blah. Oh, so frustrating, you guys. Um, again, it's not the fault of the book. The book itself has been relatively, it's been pretty interesting. But the formatting is just, I, I, I had to stop reading it today because I, I was reading it for a bit, like, um, before I went and laid down and I, I had to give it a break. So it's going to take me a little bit longer to finish, I think. Um, because I really didn't get much read on it yesterday or today. So, you know, it's probably going to take me a bit longer to read, but it is, I'm only really about not even 20% of the way through it. And I started it yesterday. So that, that'll tell you where, how frustrated I am at points reading it. One of the things I dislike about NetGalley, the fact that it's a lot of uncorrected proofs in this, especially when you're talking about eBooks. Um, so yeah, and it's a lot of errors, guys. It's not like it's just popping up here and there. It is a lot of errors. So I'm hoping that is not what the finished book is going to look like. But um, this is a cozy mystery series and the premise is about a woman named Kate and she owns a yoga studio called Serenity Yoga. She has a dog, a German Shepherd. Now I have jumped ahead in the series because I've only read up to book two. Like I said, this is book six. So she's now married and her and her husband are trying to get pregnant and it's not working and they went to a fertility clinic and found out that she is the one who is having the issues. Her um, her, uh, sh it, it's the, f I don't, I would never, I, I'm not saying this, like, I, I know there's a lot of people who deal with fertility issues and I'm sure I would have been one myself if I, um, could have had children. Um, but, uh, for cardiac reasons, I, I can't, but outside of that, my doctor thinks I would have had a lot of other issues too, but it is her who has the issue. Um, his swimmers work great. <laughs> the issue lies with her. Um, so, um, but her best friend who has a store two doors down is a store that caters specifically to young mothers, like to, to people with children, it's children's clothing, it's stuff that deals with pregnancy and stuff like that. So she's finding it very difficult to talk to her best friend who's got two adorable twin daughters and all this stuff. So, and like I said, I'm very, not very far into it. And at this point now, I'm not exactly sure where the mystery is going to go. But she has agreed to kind of take her mind off of like all these things because they do have some options, but the options that they have, no guarantee they're going to be successful and they are very, very expensive and they don't have the money. So she's agreed to, um, uh, to like to try and get out of the house because she was kind of hiding in the house. She was, she didn't want to go out. She was sad, which I totally get, um, to teach these yoga classes to inner city or under, um, like disadvantaged youth, I should say. So yeah, so that's kind of the point I'm at now is that's what she's decided to do. But yeah, so anyway, that is about it that I have been reading today. Um, this clip, I'm just looking at the time. It's gone a little bit longer than normal. So I will let you guys go um, and I'll talk to you tomorrow. Bye guys. Hi guys. Happy Wednesday. It is January the 16th and it is 9 p.m. I am desperately trying to keep myself awake. I am going to turn into this guy very soon. <laughs> Hi, Goran. Um, he was laying on the couch so cute, so I had to come over and, uh, and film in front of him. Perhaps not the best angle for me, but we'll go with it. Um, so anyway. <laughs> Why aren't you touching me, lady? Um, anyway, um, quick update for today. Um, I did finish a book today, which is very exciting. I finished reading, uh, Fade to Black by Heather Graham. 
uh, the 20, I just updated my Goodreads. I think it's the 24th. I'm sorry, am I bugging you? Oh, I love you too. Um, the 24th book in the Crew of Hunters series. Um, this one was good. I talked about it yesterday, the whole kind of plot line. You know, the ghosts that are involved and stuff like that. I ended up giving it four stars. Thoroughly enjoyable. Um, and yeah, I don't really have much more to say about it. Oh, that's kind of an odd angle for me. Sorry, Gorgor. Um, what? Are you pushing me? He's legit pushing me away. I'm sorry. Did you know this is our couch? Yes, he's purring. Here. Say hi, bud. Hmm. Yeah, now you've ru ruined my sweater. We'll deal with that afterward. Yes, they have claws. I They are not declawed. I could not do that to a cat. Um, but anyway, are you stuck? Okay, no, you're good. Okay, no, you're good. All right, anyway, sorry, back to the book. Um, <laughs> as always, guys, say it with me, distracted by cat. So anyway, um, yeah, I enjoyed the book quite a bit, and... Um, Narrated on audio, of course, by the amazing Luke Daniels. I listened to my uh, copy from Scribd. And, yeah, very, very good. Um, so what else am I reading? Um, I got, I'm about 60 some odd percent through the way of Murder Likes It Hot by Tracy Weber. Talked about it yesterday. I'm having major issues with the formatting. I mean, there's an uncorrected proof, and then there's a really uncorrected proof, and this one's really uncorrected. Um, almost every word that ends with a Y is getting that weird space. Like I said, every time the dog's name is mentioned, um, it's not even spelt correctly. And then, um, yeah, it's just, it's, it's bad. But luckily, you kind of sadly start to get used to it. The only times when it's kind of messing me up is that the page numbers... Um, are not at the bottom of the page. Sometimes it'll be in the middle of a sentence. So you're reading the sentence and then all of a sudden you get like these numbers and you're like, what the? And then it takes your brain just a second to realize what you're reading. So yeah, so that's taken away a bit from it, from the enjoyment of it for me. But outside of that, it is a good book. So this is a cozy mystery series and I mentioned it yesterday. So the plot of this is, is that she's working at this, um, this place for at-risk youth and she's teaching yoga classes. And one of the people who work at the yoga, not the yoga studio, who work at this at-risk youth center uh, is found murdered. So she's kind of taking on the investigation by herself. Well, she's, I shouldn't say that. She's not like just, you know, oh, forget the police. I'm going to do it myself. No, she's, you know, of course, an amateur sleuth kind of an idea. Now, I did mention that if you guys like Cozy Mysteries, you might like this series. But what I, what I realized as I was reading more of this today is that this is not a cute and fluffy cozy mystery. This is not a Hannah Swenson. This is not, you know, even a cat. The, I, I, no, it's not even a cat who, you know. The themes of these books tend to be a little bit darker. Um, they're still clean novels. Like, there's no adult content in them. Um, now, her and her husband are trying to get pregnant, so... It, that aspect of the marriage is mentioned, but nothing graphic. Do you know what I'm saying? But when I say that these books have a darker undertone, um, what I mean by that is, for example, she's the issues that are being addressed are not... Those of you who, who read Cozy Mysteries might know what I mean. They're not, you know, so-and-so stole... The, I don't, I'm trying to remember a, a plot for a cozy, for a cozy mystery. Stole something or, you know, somebody ends up getting murdered. You know, I mean, murder's not light, but for example, in this book, this might be the easiest way if I tell you kind of the little bit of the back, what I mean by this is that in this book at this at risk youth center, it's not just homeless kids and they just say, oh, these kids are homeless because, you know, perhaps they've, they don't want to be at home and they don't delve into any details. This book will go into details uh, in, in the fact that they talk about the fact that some of the kids are abused at home, are molested at, were molested, molested at home. So in other words, the streets is a far better place for them than at home. That a couple of the people, the, the kids in this, in this home are, um, or this center, because it's not really a home, are um, victims of sex trafficking. 
So, like, these are not light, airy topics, you guys. That's what I'm trying to say about the fact that it's a little darker. Um, and, you know, I'm using that term just to, you know, Goran, man, that's my sweater. Sorry, guys. <laughs> he was happy. Garrett came out of the room and he got all happy and he did happy paws. Um, so, yeah, so I, I am enjoying that one, though. Outside of the formatting issue, it's a good book. Um, and I'm trying to think what else. I actually think I'm going to go and um, have a bath. My back has been bugging me all day, and I find that sometimes that helps. So I think I might go do that, and I'm actually trying to stay awake, so a bath might not be the best idea. Um, like I said, it's 9 o'clock. I've been tired all day today. I felt like the slowest day ever, and yeah, so that's not fun. But I want to read some more of um, Abigail's Adventure by Caroline Lee. I have 30% left, guys. It's probably 20 pages. So I think I might just try and finish it tonight. We shall see. Because uh, Sissy, uh, Kim, has... You know, we don't need you to watch you do bath time on camera, eh? She's already starting on book C, I think. Because these are the Alphabet Bride series. So each book goes in the letter of the alphabet. Hey, you're handsome. You know that? No, he's aware. And, um... And now I'm clearly boring him. <laughs> I love when they wash their faces. I don't know why. You're adorable. Are you giving me the finger? Probably. So anyway, enough of the cat. <laughs> I'm going to let you guys go. Oh, side note real quick. Um, my David's Tea Travel Mug that I showed you guys yesterday. So I bring my tea to work. And I had it... Um, I had it in my bag so I could carry it in, right? And um, I got to work and I pulled it out of my bag and I had it. Really? And I had a sip of it. And of course it was still hot. And I thought, okay, I'm going to put this away for now. I'm going to drink some water. So I ended up like, I was so busy today that sometimes I forget to drink water. Do you guys have this too? Well, then about four o'clock this afternoon, I realized, oh my gosh, I haven't even finished my tea yet. So I got to the office at 8.30. At four o'clock, I opened it up and I'm like, well, it's going to be cold, you know, whatever. Maybe I can put some in a mug and go heat it up. Guys, it was still hot. Okay, let me rephrase that. It wasn't hot, but it was still warm. Like, it wasn't cold. I'm like, that kept it flipping insulated all day long. So, I highly recommend their travel mugs from David's if you guys are looking for a good one. But anyway, sorry, just wanted to tell you that and I will talk to you guys tomorrow. Bye, guys. Hi everybody, it is Thursday, January 17th. It's about quarter to 11 at night. And yes, I'm coming to you from my room again, um, filming another quick clip uh, before I go to bed. Um, I just remembered that I needed to come in and do this. Uh, so anyway, yeah, um, Thursday, tomorrow's Friday. I'm exhausted, I'm gonna try and keep this quick. Um, oh, before I continue on, did I show you guys? I can't remember if I showed you guys or not. I got the case for my Kindle, uh, for my new Kindle. Isn't it adorable? Of course, it's got cats on it. And look at the big cat down at the bottom. But what I love is all those cats sitting there. There's one wearing a sweater. <laughs> As you do. Um, so, yes, yeah, so I'm really, really happy with this. I seriously love it. This is actually, I think I mentioned, this is for the Kindle Fire 5, the, the fifth generation. And I have the seventh generation, but it fit. It, it I had to squeeze it in just ever so slightly, but it does fit. So... In case you are buying one, just an FYI, they do fit. So, Bernard's laying beside me, and there are more toys in this bed than anything else. Cat toys, of course. Um, so, a quick reading update for today. Sorry, let me just fiddle around the camera here. Um, sorry. <laughs> in case anyone's ever curious, that was my garter from my wedding. <laughs> I had nowhere else to put it. <laughs> so, it sits there. <laughs> Don't ask. Um... So anyway, um, reading update, my audiobook. I am currently listening to, um, oh gosh, oh my gosh, I am so tired. I'm drawing a complete blank. Simply Irresistible by Jill Shalvis, which is, hi Bernard, he's just staring at me. Simply Irresistible by Jill Shalvis. It is the first book in the Lucky Harbor series. I am really enjoying it. It is about a woman by the name of Maddie. And she has two half-sisters, but all three of the girls share the same mother, but they all have different fathers. And their mother has recently passed away, and they have inherited a an inn in Lucky Harbor. So the three of them arrive to kind of look over this inn, and of course it's falling apart and all these things. 
And, you know, the two sisters, um, Tara and Chloe, are like, no, like, let's just sell it and cut our losses and go. But Maddie just lost her job. She just broke up with her boyfriend, who was quite abusive, uh, physically and mentally, it sounds like. And she kind of wants us to, well, she's homeless. So she kind of needs a place to live and she kind of wants to make a go of the inn. The thing is, I didn't realize is that this book takes place in the weeks leading up to Christmas. So this would be a great Christmas book if you're looking for one. Of course, it's very hot and spicy. You know, true Jill, true Jill Shalvis. Um, and she meets a guy uh, like the first night in town. And he's actually the town mayor. And he's a former lawyer. And um, he's also the general contractor in town. The master carpenter, I think he goes by. And um, so they've hired him to kind of help uh, fix up the inn. So, of course, the relationship goes from there. Really cute. I'm really enjoying this. I, I uh, Every time I listen to or read a Jill Shalvis, it just reiterates how much I absolutely love her writing and her characters and her dialogue. So yeah, this one's really fun. Um, I finished my ebook today, which was Murder Likes It Hot by Tracy Weber. This is the sixth book in the Downward Dog Mystery series, Cozy Mystery series. I talked about this one quite a bit yesterday. Um, I really enjoyed it. I ended up giving it four stars. Uh, you know, again, like I said, I read an uncorrected proof, which was really annoying, but that didn't, I didn't base my writing off of that at all. Um, I may have shed a few tears at the very end of this book. It was very heartwarming, but again, it did have a slightly darker tone than most cozy mysteries. So do keep that in mind as you go into it. And yeah, I mean, I enjoyed it quite a bit. Um, my Harlequin book that I have not talked about yet in this vlog, I don't think, um, is... Cloud Over Paradise by Abba Taylor, or Abra Taylor. Um, this is the story about a woman. Now, I don't have the copy of it here. I'll post a picture of it up here so you guys can see it. Um, uh, this is the book from 1981, and it is about a woman who was hired. She, did, I didn't, uh, you know, she didn't know what she was kind of hired for, and she ends up going to this island, like, like Tahiti. I think it's Tahiti. And, you know, it turns out that it's like this very elaborate ruse that this gentleman is doing to win her affections it's like really really out there like he hires her to be like his assistant and you know it turns out it's just to spend time with her on this island I mean it's beautiful like the, the talks of the island and things like that are just lovely but I, I think it's a little overboard this guy is going and um this is a long book I, I think this book could have been much shorter I'm about 160 pages into it so I'm not disliking it, but I, I just feel that it's like really over the top. And the last thing I want to talk about before I let you guys go is the other book that I'm currently reading on my Kindle, which is Abigail's Adventure by Caroline Lee. The first book in the um, <laughs> Alphabet Bride series. Um, I have 10% left of the book to go. So my plan is I've got about 15 or 20 minutes before I, you know, my eyes are going to completely close and I'm going to be asleep uh, for the night. So I want to get that done. That's my goal for tonight. So I can talk to you guys about it tomorrow. But anyway, I'll let you guys go now and I'll talk to you then. Bye guys. Hi everybody. It is Friday, January the 18th and it is about 1030 at night. I was actually planning, I was sitting here, you know, I was updating my blog. I was actually posting another review. Um... So if you guys don't follow the blog, shameless plug, um, in the description box below, I have been good and posting reviews for like the last two weeks straight, like every day. I'm so pleased. They're not the best reviews. They're not the best critical reviews, but I, I really miss writing and I'm really enjoying kind of getting my thoughts down a bit, um, on digital because it's not really on paper, but you know what I mean? So anyway, so yeah, uh, I was just doing that and I'm like, I think because I've got two videos I want to get filmed this weekend, and I thought I thought to myself, I think I'm going to go ahead and like film them tonight. So I was finishing off editing the post on Blogger and all that, and all of a sudden it just exhaustion hit. And I thought, I need to go to bed. I have all day tomorrow, most of the day Sunday. I am going out for a bit on Sunday afternoon, but I have most of the day on Sunday. Lots of time to do this. I don't have to do it right now. You know, best to do it when we're not rushing through things and stuff like that, right? Sadly, though, my hair looks really good, um, <laughs> but that's okay, and I'm wearing an awesome, awesome sweater. I didn't knit this, but yes, it's got a Scotty dog on it. 
I bought this at the thrift store this week for four dollars. I couldn't make it for that cheap if I wanted to and it fits me perfectly so I wore this to work today. Um, so anyway, uh, what else happened today? Work was work. Um, they're calling for a massive snowstorm tomorrow. Um, 10 to 15 centimeters. I don't know what that is in inches. Do you know what that is in inches? 10 centimeters? Five, five, four or five inches, I guess. I don't know. I, I could always check my, my, um, oh, Garrett's checking his phone. Let's ask for Dukes. But I think a lot of people are getting hit with this. Anybody else in the Northeast, um, all the way from Detroit to like New York, New Hampshire. So, um, I know our, uh, our team down in Buffalo, they were batting down the hatches. What is it? 3.94. So about four inches. Um, I mean, that's not massive, massive. We're not talking feet of snow, but the fact is, is that I don't have to go in it tomorrow. We did all of our grocery shopping tonight. Um, so yes, yeah, so that's where I was going. I was telling you guys about that. So that's, that's what we did is we went and did our groceries tonight after work when I was finished work. And when we were over there, something I've been meaning to do, no joke for years, I get my eyes checked every other year, um, you know, as you're supposed to. And, um, my prescription has changed ever so slightly. Um, through the years, like my optometrist would say to me, you know, is it much change just a little bit? It's not that big a deal, you know, but over time those little bits add up and I got my last prescription when I saw her last sometime last year and I'll be honest, we haven't had the money because yes, I do have benefits that cover glasses, but you've still got to pay it initially and then you get reimbursed like up to a certain amount of money. So, um, like they don't cover in full the cost of a pair of gla or, you know, glasses. So I've been noticing over the last few weeks that my eyes have been extremely tired and from where I'm sitting with my glasses on at night, um, now the TV is across the room, which I mean, it sounds like a long distance, but it's really not. Um, I, I have to squint to read the digital display on the on our digital box. So I knew it was time to finally get my glasses. So went into Walmart tonight and they have a vision center in there and I thought I'd go in and have a little look, right? And they had a sale on and it was two pairs for $170. And then on top of that, you had to pay more for anti-glare and something for like a blue light filter. Like, and I spent all day long staring at a computer screen or, you know, our, my phone or my tablet or whatever. So I thought, you know what, it's worth the money to pay it for that reason. So I got two new pairs of glasses, you guys. I'm super excited. The first new glasses I've had in no joke, 10 years. It's been 10 years since I bought my last pair of glasses, these ones. And no, I do not wear them when I'm on camera just because, you know, they are anti-glare, but I mean, sometimes you guys have seen me in them. I'm, I'm sure you, you, you probably have. I've been wearing glasses my whole life. Um, you know, I'm not blind without them. I can see with, that's why I don't wear them is because you can see my camera in the, in the lens. So unless I angle it like that. Um, but yeah, so anyway, when I get them, I should have them in a couple weeks. Um, I will obviously show them to you guys. Now these ones are like thinner like this. I got actually, I went bigger because I find these tend to slide down my nose and you know, I'm constantly kind of like pushing them up so I can actually, so I'm not getting like the line. Do you know what I'm saying? So yeah, so I mean, I, I've grown into my glasses. I used to hate wearing them when I was a kid because kids make fun of other kids. Kids can be mean, let's be honest. And you know, I hate it because back then, you know, with the big Coke bottle, you know what I mean? Like those huge glasses, it was the eighties. And you know, I was funny cause I was laughing with the optometrist, um, about that tonight. And uh, she was saying to me, she said, everything comes back. <laughs> I said, I know. <laughs> so anyway, yeah, you guys will see those in a couple weeks. I, I promised to do a fashion show. I did get two pairs, like I said, because they were on sale. One is just a plain kind of black frame, but just a little bit wider than this. And then the other ones are, are a little bit more fun. Because I figure if you're getting two pairs, you got to get a pair that are fun, right? So the other pair that I got are just ever so slightly cat eye up here. And they're a very dark purple. They're really, really cute. And I really like them. So, and they fit really well too, which is the main thing, right? So anyway, sorry, long story short, I've been rambling on. I do apologize. Let's get on to the reading for today. Um, 
I'm just gonna keep the glasses on because why not? Um, so anyway, I finished the book today. I finished Simply Irresistible by Jill Shalvis. This is the first book in the Lucky Harbor series. It was narrated on audio by Celeste Kalua, I think is how you say her name. And it was enjoyable. I like this one quite a bit. I've talked about the plot of this one. Uh, Maddie and her sisters moved to town and they uh, have inherited this inn. And there's family secrets as well that are coming, you know, to light while they're there. And Maddie has a relationship with Jax, who is the local mayor, the local mayor slash business owner slash general handyman, excuse me, contractor. So, excuse me, in classic Jill Shelvis fashion, very, very hot and spicy. A lot of adult content in this book. Um, you know, very high on the spicy meter. Um, and yeah, but it, it was, it was a really good book and I enjoyed it. I'm not sure again, and I've said this again about this narrator. I, I like her as a narrator. Don't think this was the book for her. Um, I guess because I'm so used to, uh, Karen White, um, narrating for Jill Shalvis that that's who I expect to hear. But, um, I did look on Audible and the narrator changes every two or three books. So it's kind of nice to get to get a different voice occasionally when you're listening to like a long running series. Um, and this is one that I'm obviously reading. I am reading for my Stacking the Series Challenge this year. So I want to get um, books, I guess books one through nine because I read book 10 late last year. So yeah, so I enjoyed this one. Four stars. I do recommend it. I mean, it's Jill Shalvis. Um, I started reading Breathless by Leah Vale. I only got the prologue done. I did not have a lot of reading time today. It's been exceptionally busy at work. I've mentioned this before. I'm not going to get into it again. Um, so I only got like a chapter or like the prologue read. And then I came home from work and the husband and I went grocery shopping. And then we came home and had dinner. And then I watched CSI. And I didn't even pick up my knitting today. So, you know, that should tell you something. Um, but I did finish a book today, so that's okay. Um, did I mention? Oh, I didn't. I finished another book. I finished last night. I finished reading Abigail's Adventure by Caroline Lee. This is the first book in the Alphabet Mail Order Bride series. Um, it is available on Kindle Unlimited. There's a group of us reading through this series this year, and I really enjoyed this one. I thought it was really cute. I gave it three and a half stars. Um, about a woman who, um, works at a Orphan, orphan, an orphanage, like, in a school, like, so it's not just an orphanage, but they teach the children there. This is a, a historical novel, American West, and, um, she was married and her husband was abusive, and then he died, and she and her two children, uh, are now living at this, like, boarding school, orphanage, school thing, and the headmistress, um, offers her this deal where if she agrees to go out west and open a school, then she will get a certain amount of money um, from this like trust or something like that. So that's the premise for the entire series, that each woman is going to have this happen to them. And she heads out west and she meets this guy, and of course she's very nervous about trusting him because, you know, her first husband was abusive and she just kind of assumes that this is the way it's going to be. And her son, who's about 9 or 10, he's very standoffish to this man. Uh, his name is Mathis, and uh, the husband's name, the son's name is Joshua. And, you know, it's kind of how they all kind of learn to live together. One of my only criticisms, if I had one, because I do read a lot of historical romance, is that some of the words and phrases I found were too modern. Does that make sense? It's something that, you know, wouldn't necessarily be said in conversation. I only picked up on it once or twice, and I just thought, hmm, I wonder if that's actually a phrase they would have used back then. I can't think of it now off the top of my head. Um... But that was the only thing if I, you know, like, but again, three and a half stars. It was only a 150 page book, but it was super cute and I liked it and it was on Kindle Unlimited. So if you have Kindle Unlimited, go ahead and check it out. It's also clean. Um, you get the mention of adult content, but you don't ever get anything graphic. That's it. So, you know, depending on what, what your comfort level is, just keep that in mind. Um, I don't know if all the books are like this, but I will mention it as I go. So, yeah. And the only other thing that I... Okay, I'm like looking at the time. I'm like, is my phone going to pop up to tell me to take my messages? Or to take my pills? Um, uh, Cloud Over Paradise by Abba Taylor. Or Abra Taylor. Um, I'm about... 
200 pages through it at this point. Um, got some more reading done on it this morning. It's okay. Again, I, I'm still not blown away by this one. Um, but, and like I said yesterday, I, I'm just finding it's, he's going way out of proportion to try and get her to fall in love with him. And, and, and I, yeah, it's, I'm not loving it. Let's put it that way. But anyway, that being said, there's, you know what? I, I'm not disappointed that I'm doing this project because I didn't like the first book. The second book I enjoyed. This one is meh, you know, I'm not loving it, but I am still enjoying it. Um, and I'm enjoying reading these old romance books. So speaking of which, let's open the next one, shall we? So this is from 1982, the year my brother was born, just FYI. Um, so let's see what we have in here. Sorry for the crinkling. Oh, yes, I forgot I got this one. Oh, yay, I'm so excited. Corporate Affair by Stephanie James. Silhouette Desire. You guys see that? Book number one. This is the very first Desire book ever published. Isn't that exciting? Oh, I'm so exciting. Or I'm so exciting. I'm so excited. And really, guys, they stuck the sticker right on the back. And I'm trying to read the back to you guys. Like, honestly. Should I try and peel it off? Oh, it's coming off relatively easily. Fantastic. I wish they would all come off that easily. So... Amorous Ambush, it says. Under Kalinda Brady's cool silk surface was a smoldering heart waiting to be set afire. But the beautiful tycoon hadn't experienced the sparks to fly with Rand Alistair, artist and fisherman. That's an odd combination. Uh, the, strangers, the stranger whose caresses left her yearning for more. Kalinda has come to Colorado determined to avenge a lost love. She had arranged the setup and her ex-fiancé had taken the bait. But she was shaken by Rand's powerful embrace, torn between her passion for revenge and hunger for this lover who conquered her heart, stole into her world, and proceeded to make it his own. Sounds scandalous. So I guess it's a... It sounds like it's going to be a second chance romance. Her ex-fiancé, I would think so. So yeah, so I will definitely let you guys know... Can I just make a comment on the cover? Uh, you're going to get a glare. He looks like 20 years older than her. Not that there's a problem with that, but I'm just saying. The guys tended to always look a lot more older and more dignified, and the women tended to look quite a bit younger. At least that's just been my personal take on it so far, or uh, in seeing a lot of these old covers. But yeah, so again, super excited. This is the very first book. Ah... Does it say anything on the inside? Silhouette Desire is an exciting new line of contemporary romances from Silhouette Books. During the past year, many Silhouette readers have written in telling us other types of stories they like to read from Silhouette, and we've kept these comments and suggestions in mind with developing this line. It's all the elements you like to see in romance, plus a more sensual, provocative story. So if you want to experience all the excitement, passion, and joy of falling in love, then this is for you very exciting so yes i'm looking forward to getting this one started so anyway guys that is it for the bl blog blog vlog this week <laughs> um i will be starting to record tomorrow tomorrow is uh the first day of the create your own readathon for january uh so tomorrow and sunday and as per your guys request a lot of you said yes please to this um i will be doing a separate vlog just for the read readathon so I will be recording a vlog on Saturday and Sunday and doing a lot more like clips throughout the day and stuff like that. And then I will post that on probably on Monday. And then on Tuesday, I have got my mid-month wrap up for January. On Thursday, my Harlequin anticipated reads for February. Always exciting. And then Saturday will be back to, you know, a normal vlog um, that you guys will see next Saturday. But it'll only run Monday through Friday, so it'll be probably a lot shorter than, or not a lot, but shorter than normal. So anyway, guys, I will let you go, and I'll talk to you in my next one. Take care and happy reading, everybody. Bye.